Hello, my name is Jeremy Huff, and I, along with my colleagues on the TCR Process subgroup of the Technical Council, have put together this short slide deck to provide an update on recent changes which we have made to the Technical Council's review process, as well as an overview of that process as it currently exists. These updates are current to July 2023, but it should be noted that the TCR process is something that the Technical Council intends to continue improving over time, and there are possible improvements that still could be made in the future. Though these changes to the TCR process have been approved by the Technical Council, the work to identify problem areas and suggest improvements was done in the context of a subgroup that was formed in October of 2022. This subgroup consists of myself, Zach Burke, Craig McNally, Florian Gleichsner, Jen Colt, and Mark Johnson. I'm not sure if the duration of this work had been known at the onset, if we would have been able to attract these volunteers, but they have been faithfully engaging in the process and I have really appreciated their efforts. Once formed, our subgroup set out to accomplish the following things. Engage with the community to gather feedback on how the TCR process could be improved. Review our documentation and ensure its clarity and consistency. Update our process documentation with any changes recommended by the first two charges. And finally, to communicate these changes out to the wider Folio community. This presentation is our attempt to satisfy that last deliverable. In order to address the other aspects of our subgroup's charge, we engaged in the following activities. We began by establishing weekly meetings in which we reviewed the current state of the TCR process and discussed possible actions that could be taken to improve it. As part of the Technical Council's approach to subgroups, we would also report to the TC on these meetings at semi-regular intervals. One of the first actions we decided to take was to arrange a retrospective with the members of our community who had participated in any capacity with the TCR process. We were very pleased with the level of participation we got from those who participated in this, and the feedback that we received really helped us to focus our efforts. After all the feedback came in, our subgroup endeavored to analyze it. During this process, it seemed that a lot of the feedback which came out of the retrospective tended to be grouped into three main categories of concern. First, it became clear that our community had a wide range of perspectives on the scope and motivations behind the TCR process. Second, we needed to modify our process to allow for the continual collection of feedback from its participants. And finally, up to that point, we had failed to effectively communicate the details of the TCR process to the Folio community. After a lot of discussion over these observations, our group settled on the following actionable responses. We decided to improve our documentation through the addition of a scope statement and the refinement of our existing motivation statement. We identified several areas within our evaluation criteria that needed to be clarified. Additionally, we added a section to our evaluation template to allow for the collection of feedback during the evaluation process. Finally, we created this presentation to attempt to clearly communicate what is entailed in the TCR process. In what remains of this presentation, I will detail these process changes as well as go into an overview of the process as a whole. Previously, our motivation statement was fairly terse and directed readers almost immediately to our values and criteria document. We took some time to expand on the rationale expressed in this statement, explaining that the goal behind the TCR process is to ensure that new modules aren't introducing incompatibilities and that they are not placing unexpected burdens on DevOps, hosting, or development teams. We feel that this expanded motivation statement helps to orient the TCR process in the context of these goals. Another change to our foundational documentation is the addition of this scope statement. This statement seeks to build a consensus in our community about the expectations for the TCR process. The first thing that is done is to address the question of whether or not UI plugins or shared libraries are in or out of scope for the TCR process. There was a lot of consensus in the group that both of these should be evaluated by the same standards as modules since they are used as building blocks for our modules. But at the same time, we were conscious that a change in process like this should not be sprung on our community suddenly. For these reasons, we have used this scope statement as an announcement of our intent to evaluate UI plugins using the TCR process beginning with Quiznalia. For shared libraries, there were lingering questions in our group for how this should be approached, so we have decided to defer the details of this to after the poppy deadline. Finally, and perhaps most significantly, this scope statement addresses the concept of technical criteria versus business requirements and architectural fit. This was one of the primary areas which we felt the community had differing opinions on what role the TCR process should play. This scope statement seeks to clarify that. 
While the TCR process is intended to evaluate how well a module has met the technical requirements laid out in our criteria, it is not intended to evaluate if a module is a good architectural fit or that has successfully implemented any particular set of functional requirements. That is not to say that the TC is not involved in questions of Folio's architecture or uninterested in discussions about module implementations, but only that the TCR process is not intended to evaluate these things. Another significant change to our process was to clarify a distinction between evaluation and review. In our process, an evaluation is performed on a module, and that evaluation is then reviewed by the TC. The acceptance or rejection of a module is a decision that is made by the TC during the review of the evaluation. In most cases, we anticipate that the result of the review will be consistent with the results of the evaluation. This, however, may not always be the case, and the TC has committed in such instances to providing a written explanation of why their decision has differed from the results of the evaluation. Lastly, our process has changed to allow the TC to request a demonstration of a module during the evaluation process. A few things are worth pointing out here. One, this demonstration is not for the purpose of evaluating the module's features, but instead to ensure that the module does in fact do what it claims to do. And secondly, the request for a demonstration is at the discretion of the evaluators and the technical council, and in many instances may not be called for. For the remainder of this presentation, we will be going over the TCR process as it is currently defined, and we will end with a quick look at some of the ways in which we see the process growing in the future. The TCR process is defined as a series of steps performed by individuals serving in one of these roles listed here. There is the submitter. This is the individual who initiates the TCR process with the creation of a review ticket. The submitter can be a member of the product council or a delegate of the product council. The evaluator, formerly called reviewer, this individual will be either a member of the technical council or a delegate appointed by the technical council, and they will be responsible for performing the evaluation and moving the TCR ticket through the process. The only restriction placed on eligibility to be an evaluator is that they must not be a member of the development team seeking approval. And finally, there is a development team point of contact, which will often be referred to simply as the point of contact. This individual will interface with the evaluator throughout the process to provide relevant module information. The point of contact will typically be either the product owner or a member of the development team that created the module which is being evaluated. These three individuals will work together through the following four steps, which I will expound on as the presentation continues. The submission step, the evaluation step, the review step, and finally the feedback and approval or rejection step. The PC approved submitter initiates the submission step by creating a JIRA ticket on our TCR JIRA board. Once created, the TCR ticket will be assigned a number and will be placed in the draft state. This gives the submitter time to ensure that the submission contains all of the relevant information that is needed. One key piece of information is the self-evaluation. The self-evaluation is conducted using the same evaluation template which will be used by the evaluators and should be completed by an individual who is familiar with the technical details of the module. It is worth pointing out that if a module fails at any point in the self-evaluation, it is not recommended that the submitter advance the TCR ticket into the submitted state. In this case, it would be best for the development team to iterate on their module until they feel that it can pass the self-evaluation. At that point, the TCR ticket can be placed into the submitted state, and the TC will assign an evaluator to the ticket. Once submitted, the TC may ask for additional information, and in some cases, a demonstration of the module's functionality. Once the TC has assigned evaluators and is satisfied with the information captured on the ticket, the evaluator can move the ticket from the submitted state into the under-evaluation state. This will begin the evaluation step of the TCR process. During this step, the evaluators will conduct their own evaluation of the module using the same evaluation template that was used for the self-evaluation. It is possible that the evaluators may reach out to the submitters during this evaluation if they have questions about how the module meets specific criteria. This evaluation should take less than three weeks to complete, and once it is finished, the evaluator should move the TCR ticket from the under-evaluation status into the under-TC review status. Once the TCR ticket has been placed into the under TC review status, the module has entered the review step of the TCR process. At this point, the TC will schedule a time to review the module 
and the evaluation and conduct any relevant discussions. The evaluator will present the results of their evaluation to the TC and answer any questions the TC might have about the results of their evaluation. The review step culminates in the TC accepting or rejecting the module based on either a vote or lazy consensus. It is worth noting that in some instances a module's acceptance or rejection may not align with the results of the evaluation. In these instances, the TC must provide written justification for why they decided to either accept or reject a module despite contrary evaluation results. In most cases, however, the evaluation results should be considered to be strongly indicative of how the TC will decide. The final phase of the TCR process is the feedback and acceptance rejection step. If the module is accepted, then the TCR ticket is approved and closed. If it is rejected, it is placed back into a draft status. It's important to note that a module can go through this process multiple times and that a rejection may just indicate that some changes need to be made to the module's implementation in order to allow that module to pass subsequent evaluations. In either case, the results of a review process will be published to Slack and all participants of the TCR process will be notified. Everything that I have been discussing here is outlined in these documents. We have wiki content outlining the process in detail, the current acceptance criteria and the rationale and values upon which it is based, the current evaluation template which should be used for both the self-evaluation and by the evaluators, and finally we have documentation outlining the role which JIRA plays in this process. This is a process which admittedly got off to a rocky start but has improved much over the time the TC has been employing it. The TC is dedicated to ensuring that it continues to improve and we will be focusing in the future on exploring these areas for improvement. We hope to collaborate with the PC more in creating a comprehensive process for module evaluation that takes into account the PC's approval process. We want to ensure that we are taking advantage of mechanisms to get feedback from participants. And finally, we have begun discussing the role of this evaluation process for shared code in the Folio project and these discussions will continue. Thanks so much for your time and attention. My name is Jeremy Huff, and myself and my colleagues would be happy to field any questions you may have. Our email addresses are listed here.